Ritual refinement of naproxen racemic mixture using the size 2. Part 2. Refinement files input and preparation. To accomplish this refinement, we will be using the GSAS2 software, which is open here on my screen already, okay? So, the first thing to be done before we start the refinement is to tell the software uh, which experimental data and instrumental data we will be using on this refinement, okay? So, we start importing the experimental data. To do that, we click in the menu, on the top menu, Import, and then we click Powder Data, which is the third option from top to bottom. And then you click uh, to the right, we'll click to the first option from Broker Raw File, okay? So Raw File is the format given by the, given by the uh, equipment that we use to get this, okay? So here we are in the folder that our raw file is saved. Uh, here we're gonna open that, okay? And then some warning message may show up. We simply click yes. If that happens, it asks us again, do you want to read the file? Yes, okay? And as soon as we do that, it's going to ask us to uh, import the instrumental uh, file. The instrumental file is a file with the extension PRM, okay? It's provided uh, with the GSAS uh, that's suitable for the copper K-alpha. There are some ways we can adjust that file throughout the refinement, and you'll do a few adjustments on that, okay? On the initial parameters that are provided by that. So we click here and then open so at this point you see that the menu on the left side of the screen that was initially blank now it's still filled out basically there is like a uh, option here where we show the name of the file of the raw file we imported and then we have uh, sub options below that like comment limits background all those sub-options are things we can tune throughout the refinement. Also, once the experimental and the instrumental file have been uh, imported to the GSAS, a second window will show up as well, okay? This second window kind of gives us a preview of the, the experimental powder, okay? You see that uh, you observe basically like a blue x-ray diffraction pattern it's basically up to this moment only the experimental data and then as soon as we start doing the steps of the refinement we start observing like a, a light blue to green um, colored pattern which is going to show us the calculated pattern okay so basically like the calculated pattern is dark green and a light blue greenish pattern is the difference between the observed and the calculated. Things are going to get clearer about that as soon as we get to that point, okay? So after uh, input in the GSAS, the experimental data and the instrumental data, the next step is to provide to the software the SIF file, okay? The SIF file is the file uh, that you can get from the crystallographic open database and that's the file containing all the structural information about the structure you're trying to adjust to that experimental data, okay? So to import the SIF file to the GSAS, you go to the, again, to the top menu, 
import and then this time you click in the option phase which is the second from top to bottom and then from that you click from C file which is the fifth from top to bottom and then it's in the folder already so one thing that uh, makes the work easy is to save all the necessary files so the experimental file instrumental file and the C file all in the same folder that's something that really helps to keep things organized okay so here uh, the C file that you'll be using is the one having the COD code, so the Crystallographic Open Database code, number equal to 45013397, okay? So that's it. So this number, so this specific CIF file is the right file for the racemic mixture of naproxen, okay? And as you, in this video, you are doing the refinement for the experimental racemic mixture of naproxen. So after doing all the necessary steps, we hope to get a good fit, a good adjustment, a good agreement between the uh, experimental data and the data predicted by the sieve file. Okay, that will be our goal by the end of this video. So we take this and then you click open. Uh, a warning message may show up. Do you want to read this file? We simply click yes, okay? And then you can give a name there to that phase. So we can call a proxen racemic mixture, okay? And click okay. Then uh, another window will pop up on your screen on this time. When that window pop up, basically it tells select histograms to add to the new phase. So in other words, it's telling us, okay, uh, you, you would like to use this specific C file to refine which experimental data, okay? Histogram is kind of like a word that the GSS uses to as a sign on for experimental data. So we select the, you see the name from the experimental data file that we have here. We check that and click OK. Now, when you see that, another on the left side menu, another option show up, another menu showed up with the menu phase, okay? So under that menu phase, we have all the information that came from the CIF file. Now, at this point, we have already imported all the files necessary to start the refinement. Uh, specifically for this example, we are going to set the limits for the refinement, the limits of the range we are going to perform the refinement. And we're gonna see why, okay? Let's open again the windows, the window that allows us to observe uh, the pattern. And then on the left panel, on the menu, where you can see the name of the experimental data, we click to the option limits, which is the second one from top to bottom. So this option limits basically tells us the range uh, in two data where the experimental uh, data was collected, okay? So basically here, the minimum, original T minimum, is the initial angle, so the initial two theta angle where the measurement started, and the T max is the highest delta angle uh, analyzed, okay, highest two theta angle analyzed. So it's basically uh, where the measurement in the equipment is stopped. So on this point, what we can do is, uh, we're going to have to limit to start uh, higher than the two, uh, two degree to theta, okay? Two degrees to theta, because you see that this first peak here, this very first peak, is a peak that is very prone to uh, undergo a effect that's called preferred orientation, okay? This preferred orientation can be an artifact 
uh, that came from the sample preparation, so depending how hard you press the sample or not. So, uh, and sometimes it like can kind of like mask or alter or make worse the result. So as a precautionary measurement uh, on this analysis, what we do is to exclude this very first peak from the analysis because the intensity of that may not be accurate, okay? So you do that, that exclusion by starting the initial angle to a higher value. Instead of two, we change that to eight, okay? So you see that this green dashed line kind of like is on the right side of the peak, which means that that peak will be cut off. So it just simply here, we can leave the highest angle equal to 120, and then we can click anywhere else, okay? And that, and that change will be implemented. And that's it. As you can see in the window where you can observe the, pro the uh, experimental data, okay? Thanks for watching this part two video. Don't forget to watch also the other videos of this experiment. Thank you so much. Bye bye.